Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're going to look at the GPU utilization in DaVinci Resolve 16 and try and figure out which GPU is right for us. We'll compare a NVIDIA 2080 Ti to an AMD RX 580. Now these two cards are in dramatically different weight classes, but what we can learn from it is the utilization inside Resolve and whether or not we really need to step up to a really expensive graphics card. Before we do that, today's video is brought to us by Video Guys. What I like about Video Guys is you can get great technical support directly from their sales staff. They only sell what they know. For a limited time, John's Film subscribers get 5% off using the offer code linked below. On to the benchmark. As always, we'll start with the worst case scenario. So I'll turn off optimized media. I will turn off the render cache. I will turn off any proxy mode that might have been on. And I will turn off the Fusion memory cache. These are helpers that helps this run more efficiently, and we're going to take those away so we can see the raw performance of the hardware. We start in the timeline with ungraded footage, and we were increasingly more complex as we go. Starting with the 2080 Ti, I hit play, and pretty quickly it gets to 5994 through the ungraded H.264 8-bit footage off of a GH5. Some of this is log, some of this is other color profiles, all ungraded. Now as we step into our graded footage, you can see still runs along just fine. There's simple grades here, just color contrast, making sure the exposure is perfect. Next we're going to get into some more complex tasks. So here you'll see a stabilized clip, which is still running at 5994 with a hiccup or two. And then as you see, we get into the noise reduction and there's no way that this can hold up at 5994, though it is still delivering 54 frames a second. Next is a pretty heavy text transition that flew by and some slow-mo speed warp. This is the real pain. You'll see here the playhead's gone way ahead and we skipped most of the frames inside that speed warp. Even with the 2080 Ti and the Threadripper 1950X, we couldn't keep up. Now with our RX 580, same timeline, same bench, starting to play it immediately off the front. You see an immediate degradation and drag here. Reminder, this is 4K footage that's running H.264, 8-bit color, and it is trying to run at 60 frames a second. We finally, finally caught up with ungraded footage here near the end. Here's our graded footage, simple color grading on it, nothing extreme and it's, it looks like it pre-processed, got ahead a bit, and is working. I'll tell you though, the graphics card, looking at my metrics and statistics, it's up around 100%. So just on color graded, now in the stabilized footage, still holding pretty well. The processor kicked up, the primary processor on the PC. And now with the noise reduction, we seem to have hit a wall. And it's not rendering to us, it's just blowing by it. Same with the speed warp. Wow, so the playhead has moved ahead heavily. The noise reduction seems to be where this card breaks down when it comes to full 4K footage. So obviously you could come into your playback menu, you could turn on a proxy mode, run it at maybe half resolution, and you could turn on your cache so that once something was rendered once, it wouldn't have to come back and do it again. Same with your fusion work. But let's do this. Now that we've seen it, run through once, I've scaled back via proxy mode to half resolution, and we'll play through again. Let's see what happens. More immediately, we hit 5994 in the ungraded footage section, so we know that that's been a major help. Have no visible degradation in our preview window. Colored footage goes in and works pretty well. No issues here. So we see a big difference dropping from the full 4K window render to the 2K window render. It's holding through color grading, it's holding through stabilization. The noise reduction is still going to be its nemesis, it has not kept up with that. 
We're not able to get through noise reduction at all. The playhead is again jumped ahead into the speed warp section with the optical flow. This is a DaVinci Resolve 16 feature. This is neural network to automatically fill in the blanks when you slow some footage down so much that it would be juddery. But you'll notice our playhead is actually down on the ungraded footage that's at the end of this for render times and hasn't moved uh, in the render window forward. My CPU at this point is around 11% my GPU is running at 100. However, you see some promise when you drop down to a playback proxy mode of half resolution. And I'm gonna bet if we go to even lower, again, very little, uh, I can kind of tell the difference now, but it's really easily workable. You got 1080p shoved into this little window. Looks pretty good, flying through the color grading. See what that stabilization does. Here it is without stabilization. Here it is with stabilization. Pretty good. Noise reduction is still gonna be a problem for it. You can see it is drawing more frames, but... Yeah, you can see in the pan right there, it's really bad. So it looks like the RX 580 is going to now render. All right, so we've got some more luck here. I'm at 100% on the graphics card, 17% in the processor. But that becomes much more editable. Let's move over and look at some render benchmarks. Setting the stage on our benchmark, there's only one type of encoding we'll be able to run on our FireX 580. However, our 2080 Ti, we have a hardware encoder built into the chip, and that is the NVIDIA uh, NVENC encoder, NVENC for encode, and it's a hardware accelerated, explicitly constructed device to encode video, and I think you'll see what that does in the results coming up. So on the NVIDIA card, we'll run both the H.265 encoding across the NVIDIA encoder, and then we will also run the H.264 native encoder, which uses the native codec. To nobody's surprise, it took longer to get the RX 580 to do its work. However, rendering to 4K took it 46 minutes across this timeline on an average of three runs. The 2080 Ti was significantly faster with around 10 minutes for the native encoder built in and about eight minutes or just under for the NVENC encoder that's included on the card. So what did we learn today? Well, in a worst case scenario, and that's using the heaviest, most painful features of DaVinci Resolve on render and on the timeline, we've learned that the RX 580 is going to need to be stepped back either through proxy mode, through optimized media, or some other means to make it easier for the processor and the graphics card to work through the timeline and through the render. Now, if timing's not that important to you, the quality of the output file is the same and it looks pretty good. The challenge is gonna be in your editing experience. What is it like? And the reality is you can edit at 1080 and render to 4K. So that's likely the right experience, likely the right call. Now, I think the best value, the best bang for the buck would be around a 1070 from NVIDIA because it includes the exact same NV encoder that's in my 2080 Ti. And it has enough processor power to be able to get through a lot of the challenging portions of the timeline with the need for proxy or optimized media in the more challenging sections. Thanks for watching today. Please subscribe if you'd like to see some more benchmarks related to DaVinci Resolve and video editing. And if you'd like to see this test done in a 1080p timeline, let me know below in the comments. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.